So it's cheesy and bubbly and looks delicious. We're talking about maybe some healthy holiday snacks um, that you could potentially bring to your next party or have at your house or gathering or something um, as a little appetizer. I'm actually doing um, a little treat. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is kind of get started on my little treat thing here. I'm going to show you. It's like literally the easiest recipe. I don't think you can even call it a recipe. Seriously. So what I have here is just some pretzels. Okay, and I bought the snap, they're called snaps. They're the, the square type of pretzels. And just a par piece of parchment paper on a cookie sheet. And I also have some Rolos. Okay, these are just your typical Rolos. They aren't filled with kale or black beans or anything. Okay, <laughs> this, Darn. Is, this is not a particularly healthy recipe, but it's it, a fun one. It is a fun one, and what I like about these is that they're very portion controlled. So if you just need a little bit of something just to kind of satisfy your sweet tooth, then these are perfect because you can just have be one and done. Yeah. Sometimes I keep them in the freezer so that it kind of puts some distance in between you and just eating a bunch. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these in the convection oven over here. And we're just going to bake them for just about like three minutes, mm. okay? And what you are looking for is for the Rolo to melt slightly but not lose its shape, okay? okay. So it should still look like a Rolo. So, okay, so you can see they kind of still look like Rolos, but they're definitely yeah. melted, right? Yeah. So we're just gonna take the pecan now. You just slightly oh, press wow. down. It's so satisfying, really. Press it down on the melty. Little Rolo. Yeah. Okay. And if you wanted to, you could even toast your pecans or buy already toasted pecans. It adds just that little bit of extra flavor. The next recipe that we're going to be doing is a spinach artichoke dip. Oh. Yay! <laughs> Okay, and so this kind of dip is very typically very laden in fat and calories, okay, because you make it with like sour cream and cream cheese and all of these um, other ingredients. So we're just gonna make a few swaps to lighten it up a bit, and then you can see what we're going to serve it with is a wide variety of vegetables here, okay? So we got some broccoli, cauliflower, some carrots, some snap peas, and just a few crackers. These are 100% whole grain crackers. I always say when you have a lot of dips, whether it be bean dip or salsa or hummus or guacamole or spinach artichoke or cheese dip, try and serve those kind of dips with vegetables instead of your typical like crackers, bread, chips. You could have a little bit of that, but have the majority be vegetables, okay? Because that's going to help you increase your vegetable intake, right? If you have a yummy dip to put it in. Um, and it cuts a lot on the carbs and calories, especially if you're trying to watch your blood sugar or watch your weight or whatever you're trying to accomplish with your health, okay? So um, we're gonna get started. So. I'm just gonna mix up our ingredients here in the bowl. So what I'm starting with is some whipped cream, not whipped cream, cream cheese. This is whipped cream cheese, which is generally much lighter and lower in fat than your typical block cream cheese. So this for two tablespoons is 50 calories versus your traditional cream cheese for two tablespoons would usually be 100 calories. Um, and there is, let's see, only four grams of fat, whereas you're probably getting eight to 10 grams of fat in your typical cream cheese. Okay, whipped cream cheese is pretty much in the same aisle, in the same place, um, and at your grocery store, so that's an easy swap to make. So I just have eight ounces of that that I'm gonna put in our bowl here. You can see the texture is kind of a lot more light and fluffy than your typical, like, really dense type of um, cream cheese. 
Instead of using sour cream, we're actually going to use Greek yogurt. Nice, I like that. Okay, so Greek yogurt actually has a very similar texture and flavor to sour cream. So, I just have some regular, you wanna make sure it's plain. You don't wanna put strawberry Greek yogurt up in there. <laughs> that might not go with your other flavors so well. Okay, and then, so I'm just gonna stir this a little bit and we're putting about one cup of the Greek yogurt in there. If you've been coming for, to my class for a while, you know that I never measure things. <laughs> um, okay, so we got that in there. We are also going to add some seasonings. So I just have some onion powder here. Okay, so this is just a salt-free seasoning. It's just onion powder. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon. Okay, and then we're gonna put about just a pinch of red pepper flakes just for a little heat. Put a few more. Okay. And then I already grated some cheese. It's about uh, one-ish cup of part skim mozzarella. Mozzarella actually tends to be one of the lower fat cheeses um, just naturally so it can be a good option a little bit of pink sea salt here okay um, because sometimes like cheese and cream cheese have some naturally occurring sodium so you don't need a lot of salt for this recipe okay so you want to get kind of your cheesy ingredients incorporated first and then we're gonna kind of add our vegetables. And so I just drained and roughly chopped one whole jar of canned artichokes. So those are all gonna go in there. Artichokes are um, surprisingly nutritious. Uh, they just kind of look like yellowy, kind of bland something, you know? But they do have quite a bit of fiber and antioxidants and they're actually quite good for you. So um, artichokes are really heart healthy. We're gonna add some garlic as well. Okay, so I just have my whole head of garlic here and I'm just going to take a couple cloves off. Okay, so I do that to loosen the head and then just take a, off a couple of these bigger cloves. What you want to do is just remove the root end here and then we're going to basically do the same thing and give a smash to our cloves. That helps loosen the skin a little bit so that it comes off a lot easier. Oops. I'll just do that again. And then the clove generally pops out really easy from the skin. And you're not like sitting there using your fingernails to peel all this garlic. Mmm, smells good. Okay. So you can just mince your garlic up, but I kind of like to use a garlic press. It gets it really well incorporated. So I got my handy handy garlic press here and that's just gonna kind of go in. Okay, perfect. So, a couple cloves of garlic, and then of course we have our spinach. Now, I got a whole 10 ounce box of frozen spinach, um, and it's right here, and you wouldn't think it was 10 ounces because it looks really small, <laughs> okay? But it basically really condenses down. Here's the thing about frozen vegetables. They're usually just as good as fresh. They're usually picked at their height of their season and so um and flash frozen right away so if you can't maybe afford fresh frozen is a really really good option another reason too because like frozen vegetables usually like frozen spinach will say spinach in the ingredient list versus for example canned spinach or canned green beans which are going to have a little bit longer laundry list of ingredients added to the canned varieties versus the frozen. Okay, so why I have this in paper towels, 
uh, frozen spinach is gonna have a lot of moisture, okay? So we want to make sure we get out a lot of that moisture or else you will really end up with a soggy mess of a dip. Okay, so I just have this in uh, paper towels and I'm just going to kind of squeeze out some of this moisture. I already squeezed it a couple times um, before. Okay, as you can see, a lot of the moisture came out to that paper towel. And so we're just going to add that in. And then once we stir it, it'll kind of get more evenly distributed throughout there. And we're just going to kind of stir that all around here. And then I'm gonna use this baking dish. Just want an oven safe. And with all things, you guys, you know, I'm all about portion control. So eat what you love, but maybe in a portion controlled way. And then we'll kind of top it off with our Parmesan. Next on our list, we have a um, healthy kind of skewer board or wreath type of thing that I'm going to make and you can kind of see that I have all the ingredients over here kind of lined up. But what I have here is some cherry tomatoes, some Kalamata olives, some black olives, um, some sweet pickled peppers, okay? These are found in the same aisle that you would find like pickles, okay? Artichoke hearts, pickles, olives, it's all right there in the same aisle. And some of these mini mozzarella pearls. Okay, so this is really super fresh mozzarella. You can see that it's still in its brine. Um, and they're just really little tiny little bite-sized pearls of mozzarella. And then of course some fresh basil leaves that I've kind of just torn up a little bit. And then some olive oil and balsamic glaze. Okay, this balsamic glaze is from Trader Joe's. You could also just use plain balsamic vinegar, but it won't be quite as thick as this glaze is. Um, I bought some extra long toothpicks. I find that for this preparation, the regular size toothpicks are just a little bit too short and I can't fit everything that I want on there. Um, so these are really handy. Also just found at a regular grocery store where you would find the other toothpicks. You just look for the extra long toothpicks. And basically you just kind of go to town with, with what you want on your little skewer. So I kind of do them all a little bit differently so it looks a little bit different on the platter, but you could certainly all make them super uniform. The only tip I would have is to put the basil leaf somewhere in the middle, not on the edge because it's more likely to fall off that way, okay? So I'm, I'm doing it around the edges like this just because I wanted this board to look a little bit wreath like um, so that's why I'm using a circular board and it's yeah and I'm doing it kind of around like that so it looks kind of Christmassy you could just lay them all out on a platter that would work really nice too very festive looking okay so we got our perimeter here I'm just going to give these a little drizzle of of olive oil okay and that just adds a little bit of this great heart healthy fat helps and shine bring yeah helps out bring the flavor out just a little bit and then of course a little drizzle of balsamic as well and so this would be kind of like making a vinaigrette for uh -huh. them but way easier yeah